You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. The Biden administration reverses a Trump rule allowing more powerful showerheads. Yep, we're talking about showerheads. This has come down to needing a ruling on, hey, we kind of we kind of let the showerhead thing get out of control. People had slightly more water pressure going through their showerheads. Now we need to ratchet that down. I mean, we just shower heads, it's a big deal. We got to work our way through this one. As a country, we need to be concerned about the water flow being powerful enough, not powerful enough with our shower heads. Hmm. This is this is literally what we're talking about. Okay. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to talk about it. But if you're new here, I'll introduce myself anyway. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies and I read the news from this perspective. And that's why we're talking about shower heads because showers go in bathrooms, bathrooms are in houses, houses part of real estate. Yep, here we go. Okay. The Energy Department on Tuesday announced a rollback of a Trump era rule that had loosened restrictions on water flow in shower heads. The new rule restores 2013 regulations on how much water can be carried through said shower heads. Under the earlier rule, the entire shower was considered under rules restricting flow to 2.5 gallons per minute. The Trump revision changed the definition of shower head to every nozzle in a single product, meaning a single shower fixture could carry two or three times the previous limit in some cases. Now, I know some tree huggers are probably going to get pretty worked up about this. And they even tree huggers, that's what I refer to them as, as environmentalists who are like, oh, we're going to run out of water. All right. Yeah, maybe. Um, or, yeah, we need to we need to stop uh, using gasoline and we just need to all walk everybody, you know, that kind of thing. We're talking about shower heads and water flow. Okay, so, so how about the toilet one? If you can adequately flush the toilet and use less water, all right, I'm okay with that. But shower head, there should be a minimum where you can get good water flow coming out of that bad boy, right? And if you're an adult, you can figure out how to turn that, you know, higher or lower. And from that standpoint, I'm kind of like, really? You're going you're gonna to micromanage the water flow through our shower heads now? And apparently this has been ongoing because we had a 2013 regulation that was overturned that's now you know being back overturned because this is an important topic. I mean, raging inflation, homelessness, an epidemic of crime, increase in you know, homicide rates, I mean, not enough people to to work all the jobs out there. Got supply chain issues. Are we going to have Christmas? And then to top it off, your shower head might have too much flow. That's not good. We need to regulate that. So in the midst of all this other stuff, we've got shower head flow to work on now too. Interesting, right? I am aware of these kind of things because I have been doing a remodel in my house but I don't give a damn about the shower head. Maybe if I got in there and it just wasn't doing anything, I'd, I would figure, what I would figure is, okay, my house is old, it's built 1950, whatever, maybe 1960, I should know these things. I don't, don't care. I think it's 62. Um, you, you know, and you've got piping that allows a little bit of debris to come through every time you shut off the water and turn it back on. And that debris goes up to your shower head and blocks it. So if you got a shower head that's not working, you take that bad boy off and you clean it, and you put it back on. And then if it still wasn't the water flow you want, you go get a new shower head. But now I got to be concerned about, is it the new one, the old one, the 2013, the one before 2013? Is this a post-2013 shower head? I don't know. That is literally some of the talk that happened when we ratcheted down the number of gallons to um, to flush a toilet. And that was a big debate because all of a sudden, there's a premium on existing toilets with greater water flow because you don't want to do the two flush thing. You don't want to, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Just leave it there, you know, um, to leave it there because you use the water you used 
Uh, it's a no go you, using two flushes that that I mean, that is right up there with limited shower head um, water pressure on, you, you know, uh, how do we get here? The restoration is not projected to have major impacts on the shower head industry. The earlier revision came not as a result of the industry lobbying, but rather frequent complaints from Trump himself that current shower heads did not carry enough water. So I mean, we, you know, we've got to, we, you got to thank Donald Trump for what he did. And he got you a little more water pressure in the shower head. Hmm. Put that up there with, you know, peace agreements and whatever that award was that he got. You take a shower. This is from Donald Trump here. You take a shower. The water doesn't come out. Yeah, I've been there. You want to wash your hands. The water doesn't come out. Oh, frustrating. So what do you do? You stand there longer or you take a shower longer because my hair, I don't know about you, but it has to be perfect. The former president said in 2020, there you go. There you go. And then a whole industry jumped to that and said, oh, you know what? We need more water pressure. It's kind of like more cowbell on Saturday Night Live with Blue Oyster Cult and Will Ferrell. More cowbell. Will Ferrell and uh, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken being the producer and I think he was playing the role of, oh man, it was, uh, I think it was one of the dudes from Led Zeppelin. Can't remember, but yeah. The, remember, and then more cowbell. And so, yeah, you've seen that. You can Google that on YouTube. That is some funny stuff. The Obama era, era rule was an update of 1994 regulations meant as an update to reflect the manufacturing of shower fixtures with multiple nozzles. So much to know about fixtures in your home that's irrelevant, but relevant when they no longer fit your 1962 home and you have to do some kind of workaround. What a pain in the ass. Just let me install the damn thing. And by me, I mean the contractor, right? We want it to work. Don't want me to install it. The energy department had signaled a return to the 2013 rule as early as July when it announced a proposal to restore the status quo. At the time, the department said it was not aware of any shower heads introduced to the market under the LUSA rules. So it seems like the shower head industry is self-monitoring itself and saying, you know what, we're getting enough water pressure out of these ones that, that we've got on the market now. Let's just stay with it, even though we could boost it up another pound or two or whatever that measurement is of shower heads. I guess it would be a gallon per minute flow, right? All right. The Trump era rule change attracted more support from conservative and pro free market groups, such as the Competitive Enterprise Institute, which said in a statement Wednesday that consumers should be able to decide for themselves what kind of showers they buy and use and do so free from regulatory constraints. They should be able to, but it seems like every single little thing in our lives now is being restricted. We need, we need greater restriction on your water flow. Toilet, oh, watch out. Dishwasher, high capacity, low water flow. Refrigerator, all right, you got the water thing in there? Do you have a, an internal water? I mean, just all of these options. And then you've got that energy rating and so much to know, so much to discuss. But I think what you need to take away from the bottom line of this podcast is that even though we've gone back to the um, 2013 uh, restrictive water flow, it's okay, because it's not you're going to be able to still get the same shower heads because it doesn't feel like we made any major changes there. And yet how many millions of dollars will probably be spent on changing up this rule? Because you know, uh, we had to overturn that guy's deal. And we need to, to be here now because you know, this is one of those important things that I mean, I we, we talked about what's going on and kind of what's what's impacting the marketplace right now, that little thing called inflation. And, you know, the whole that then we I didn't even touch on the build back better plan, which it seems Joe Manchin is, he is just putting his foot down. He is he is not going to run with that if he can't explain that to his people back home. You're not doing it, not going to do it. He's not going to be influenced. So that bad boy is not going to get done before Christmas or the new year, is it? And uh, to see everybody get really worked up about that, kind of interesting. And uh, it's like, Joe Manchin, 
are you a republic are you going to join the republican party what are you doing there cuz it seems like that's where that's where you're kind of directing your energies i don't know just politics in general i don't follow it super closely but it sure is entertaining at times what's really entertaining is to watch the reaction from the left side when they realized, oh my gosh, one guy is going to basically hold up our whole deal here. And then they just poop on him, you know, just, just dump on him. Like, ah, oh, the world's going to, if we don't spend this $1.7 trillion in a period of high inflation, if we don't spend that money, America's going to crater. It's like, how much inflation do you really want to see that? I mean, at, at what point do you realize, all right, this isn't transitory. We're going to keep on going here. And uh, you dump some more money in there, guess, guess what's going to happen, folks? That inflation's going to get worse. Hmm. Yeah, but we're, you know we're not we're not focused on the inflation right now because we've been we've been told repeatedly that it's transitory. Yeah, but we, we were also told fifteen days to stop the to flatten the curve. Wasn't that it? Wasn't that it? How did that work out? What are we now on day nine hundred seventy one? No, nah, it's short of uh, what? Short, short of two years. This March will be a full two years. So we're a year and a half into it. It's day 400 and whatever. I mean, this stuff is just, it, it's so crazy. And um, yeah, we've got, we've got shower heads being regulated. We've got this other stuff going on. We're going to just dump a bunch more money on the economy and we'll just kind of try and figure it out. You know what's interesting? Haven't heard as much as I thought I would hear about the whole supply side chain with Christmas and Christmas basically not coming. I, I've been able to get gifts, even gifts, gifts ordered on Amazon. It says it'll take a little bit longer than normal, but for the most part, I feel like I haven't really suffered. Are there areas in stores that you go to and that are just totally wiped out? Yeah, but it feels like they get you know, updated and they get restocked, replenished, or you can go to another store and, you know, figure something out. It hasn't been horrific on my end here in Seattle. I don't know about where you are, you are located, but I haven't noticed, okay, because it's consumer time, because we're buying a bunch of ridiculous presents for people in our family that arguably don't need them. That's what I find the majority of this stuff. It's like, okay, let's, let, let's give it to kids who don't have, who don't have anything. Let's, let's work on that. Everybody else, you know, if you've got a job, you probably don't need to be, you know, given a gift, but somebody wants to do something just to give you a gift, that's fine. But so much of the stuff and so much of the stuff specifically in my family, it feels like is just, all right, we got to give these gifts. We just, but that's always me too. I'm just, I'm always on the, Hey, let's do the secret Santa. I implemented that in my family. Secret Santa, adults, 18 and over, $75 cap on the gift. That's what we're going. And you know, we need a we need a rule resetting back to the 2013 rule. Um, just like the shower head thing. But I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's the holidays. And um, you want everybody to be happy. So if everybody wants to give gifts, let's just let her rip and make those epic gifts. But you know, the thing that, that we do need to be concerned about is that at some point in time, our shower heads might be micromanaged to the point where there's zero water flow and then you just got to take a bath and, oh, that's not good either. I mean, uh, it's not quick and efficient, but all right, I digress. So that's about it for me on this one. It's a quick topic, um, but an important one. Monitor your shower head water flow because down the road, you might not be able to get that bad boy again. If you've got a pre-2094, 1994 one or a 2013 one, you might want to hang on to that because you may not be able to get that. And I do remember it being a thing in real estate. Hey, what year is that toilet? Is it an older one? Had, you know, lots of stuff go through it? Keep it. That's a keeper. That's a keeper because it's got that greater water flow and, you know, you don't have to double flush. You can, you can just do one and, oh, it just all magically goes down. So, and, um, you know, the older shower heads, hey, hey, got that water flow. All right, that's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I know there wasn't a lot of substantive stuff in this one, but sometimes you got to have these in here because people need to know about their shower head, the background, 
and water flow. Those are important things. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I will catch up with you soon. Until then, stay safe and we'll talk again. Bye for now.